So I'm going to go ahead and program up some EEPROMs uh, for use in my Apple II projects. I'm going to program up a, an EEPROM for the Character Generator ROM and program up some EEPROMs to replace the PROMs, or not even PROMs, the ROMs that are on the Apple II motherboard. So uh, I have a GQ 4X programmer. I've had it for quite a while. This programmer does deal with uh, 2716s. I have a couple later versions of other programmers that don't handle 2716s. They handle 2732s and later for whatever reason. I actually have the other one because it deals with uh, gals and pals and that kind of stuff. But for exercise here, we're going to go ahead and try to program up uh, a character gender ROM right now. So I've got a MOSTEC MK2716. I have loaded. That is my device type here. Let's go ahead and load the 3410036 file. That is uh, the ROM file for the character generator on the Apple II Plus, as I recall. Uh, let me go ahead and program this device. We'll see if he'll program. Note that I have my program here on external DC power as well. A lot of devices can be programmed directly off USB only. Uh, as it tells me here, apply external power. Some devices draw a lot of current during programming. This is probably a 25 volt part is my guess and it could draw significant current and the the, the the DC to DC step up in here may not deal with the 5 volt USB power to 25 so external power is warranted let's go ahead and hit right and it'll make a couple programming passes and device is verified so we can uh, I don't use this software enough we can verify it here a couple more passes you know, at this point, that device appears to be programmed. So I'm going to call that good. I'm going to grab a label here. I pre-printed out some labels. Let me go ahead and get a label on him so I can keep track of who he is. So we have our 3410036 character gen. I have no idea what that 6 on the end is there. That's a typo. Oh well. Good enough for now. I'll print a new label for that a bit later. I also want to go through and program up uh, uh, the, the, the uh, set of 6 ROMs. And I'm going to use these devices just because again they're from 1977. They're age appropriate. They're an Intel uh, B2716s and it appears oops, if I go in here and change the device to EEPROMs, scroll through and find Intel, we'll find a D2716, and that programming uh, configuration seems to work fine with these. I'll drop him into the socket. I'm just going to verify that he's uh, blank. And he is, like I said, he's all, I don't know if I mentioned this, all these EEPROMs have been erased. Uh, so they should all be blank. They weren't blank when I started out here. So let's grab the D0 ROM. Let's go ahead and see if we can program him. You can see the programming performance here is different. This is taking longer. I don't know if this is doing intelligent programming. It looks like that was successful as well. I'll go ahead and run a separate verify pass if I can find verify. And it's good. So we loaded up here uh, D0. I do have a tag here for D0. Let me get that decal on this guy. Or label. Sorry, I'm not applying these directly on camera. It, it's hard to do up under the camera. So there's our D0 ROM. And let's just walk through these and see if we can get a set of six. I actually have a couple extras of these here. So let's go ahead and load D8. D8 is loaded. And let's go ahead and write a device and see if we're successful. We have D8. Let me find the D8 label here in the little stack of labels. D8. So uh, in upcoming videos, I'm going to be replacing the character generator ROM 
on my Apple II Plus RFI edition with the 2716 to see if that will correct the video issues that we'll talk about in that video. And I'm also going to replace all the onboard system ROMs, the 9316s with 2716s. And we will talk through the design of how I'm going to do that. So let's go ahead and get ROM E0 is loaded. See if we can write it to this device. I'm wanting to have a set of matched ROMs for this just because I think it'll look a little better. Not that people are going to be, of course, you know, looking inside of the machine. I have got a stack of MOS Tech 2716s back here as well that I could get a match set out of. I dug through a large stash of 2716s to come up with these. Uh, actually, the uh, EEPROM programmer sits sitting on top of an organizer box that is just full of EEPROMs. Uh, there's 1702s, 2708s, all the way up through 1 megabit and maybe even 4 megabit EEPROMs. Almost all of these are salvage. Pick up the E8 file. E8 is loaded. Almost all of them are salvaged just from equipment that's been scrapped over the years or pulls other people have done that have come my way. Uh, I am lucky in that I have a large UV erase oven designed for erasing EEPROMs. It's got about a one foot by one foot bed. <clears throat> Picked that up at Boeing Surplus ages ago. It came from the FCC lab. And she's been a really great, great UV oven. I do have, while I'm talking about UV erase ovens, this little guy here, if I can get him into camera. This is a little standalone. It's just got two slots here on the edges that you slide EEPROMs down into. doesn't have a timer. You just slide them in, turn it on, wait 30 minutes, pull them out. Uh, luckily, I had that large bed one, so it made erasing large numbers of these fine. So that is E8. Find the E8 decal here. Call them decals, they're labels. We have E8. Let's load F0. Get a device in the socket. Pins on some of these are rather banged up on that device. They're pretty crooked. We will write this device. And verify. Uh, double verified. Verified when it was written and then just re-verified there. Because I can, so let me label him up. I believe these are all 450 nanosecond parts, which should be adequate for the Apple II. Looking at the specification for the 9316B, it appears to be a 450 nanosecond part. So pretty much any 2716 should work. Uh, let's grab F8 here. Unmarked 2716s tend to be 450 nanosecond parts. I won't guarantee that, but that tends to be the case. And then the faster parts will be marked like dash 3 for 300 nanosecond, dash 2, dash 1, dash 1, 2 for faster parts. Uh, with the ROMs that earn it being 450 nanosecond, I'm confident all of these should be fast enough. Uh, though I could be wrong. It wouldn't be the first time today. So we have F8. We double verified. F8 is labeled. In a uh, future set of videos, we'll be looking at the work I do in the video section to see if I can fix the video hash I've talked about in other videos where the characters aren't correct all the time. By substituting this EEPROM in, uh, we'll talk about why that works and, and how I do that. Uh, and then we're going to go in and replace all the system ROMs with this set of six and see if I can make that work as well. So those will be in upcoming videos. So hopefully this little video was useful, entertaining, and we'll talk soon.